Hey everyone, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Tonight we're going to do a story called Another Class Trip. If you like the story, don't forget to share it with a friend. You know, if uh, every single person listening shares it with one friend, then we would get uh, twice as many listeners, according to my math. Anyway, time for the story. Now just close your eyes, get as comfy as you can in your bed, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. Imagine yourself waking up in the morning. You get out of bed, you stretch, and you go about your normal morning routine. You know, getting dressed, brushing your teeth, having some breakfast. And then you head off to school in whatever way you normally do that. When you arrive in the class, your teacher's not there for some reason. Before long, all of the other kids file in and you're sitting down at your desk. Then a strange man walks in. Hi there, I'm going to be your supply teacher for today, the man says. Now, uh, where are those lesson plans? The man begins to look through the desk and through the drawers and through the filing cabinets. Where would she have put the lesson plans, he says. Uh, I think they're online, you put up your hand, responding to the man. Ah, online, um, okay. He opens up the computer on the teacher's desk and begins to try to log in. It doesn't seem like it's going very well. He clearly isn't great with technology. Forget this. Uh, Someone just tell me what you're working on today. Uh, You there, what what were you doing today? The man points directly at you. Uh, today... Well, you say, getting a uh, very clever idea in your head. Today we were actually supposed to go on a class trip, you respond. Your classmates look a little confused and begin to stare at you. You give them a quick whispering signal, indicating that they should just go along with it. A field trip, the teacher says. Well, I don't know if we can go on a field trip. There's permission forms and other things like that to get. Oh, don't worry about that, you say. Uh, We all have our permission forms all handed in. Don't worry, they're in the teacher's filing cabinet there. Oh, the man says, really, well, I don't know. I should probably ask the principal, the man says. Oh, uh, don't ask the principal, you say. It's it's cool. The bus will already be here anyways. Uh, Everyone follow me. You reach into your pocket and pull out Spaceship. Spaceship, you say. You know what to do. The bus thing. Spaceship flies out of your hand and zooms out the window of the classroom. Follow me, everyone, you say, leading the class to the door where they all line up in single file. A little reluctantly, the supply teacher walks up to the front of the line. Okay, class, uh, let's go, I, I guess. You lead the class out the door, through the hallways, and outside where there's a bus waiting. Now, you know that the bus is actually a spaceship in disguise, but nobody else knows that. As you walk up to it, you see a very strange looking bus driver. Clearly, spaceships created some sort of hologram once again. The bus driver looks at you with a strange blank stare, his eyes too wide to be natural, and his smile too enthusiastic to be real. Welcome aboard the bus, the bus driver says. Everybody climb on in. The bus driver waves everyone towards the back of the bus. The kids look back and forth at each other and some of them begin to laugh, but everybody begins to file onto the bus and sit down in their seats. Let's go, kids, the bus driver says. He closes the door and suddenly slams his foot down on the gas pedal. 
the bus's tires squeal as you do a burnout out of the parking lot, zoom down the road, and straight out into traffic. All of the kids begin to scream and hold on to the side of the bus as tightly as they can. Spaceship darts the bus in and out of traffic, zooming around cars, pulling over onto the shoulder to pass others, until you see a tunnel coming in front of you. Everyone ready? The bus driver says. The kids are now looking a little bit scared as the bus driver, well, spaceship as you know him, is driving pretty erratically through traffic. You suddenly see a large green light, and everyone has to close their eyes and turn their head away from it because it's so incredibly bright. As the light disappears and everyone can open their eyes again, the scenery's completely changed. You're no longer inside a tunnel. Suddenly you're in a uh, gigantic parking lot with a whole bunch of what look to be spaceships parked in the different spaces around you. Everyone seems a little confused, but they go along with it. Welcome to Trampoline World, the bus driver says. You and all of the kids walk off the bus and into the parking lot. All around you, different people who were, for some reason, dressed up as aliens of all different kinds, are walking towards a central gate. You decide to follow them. You get to the gate, and the people standing at it just open it for you. You and your whole class walks through into a huge room, or maybe not even a room, just a gigantic open space that's filled with trampolines on every single surface. All of your classmates realize that they're in some sort of trampoline park and they all yell and cheer. You take off your shoes and put them in a little cubby nearby and then you begin to bounce on the trampolines and high up into the air. For some reason, gravity seems like it's a little bit lighter here. You bounce a bit higher and you fall a bit slower. It allows you to feel very confident to do all sorts of tricks. You try some flips and gently float up into the air and gracefully land on your other side. You do spins and twirls and you jump from trampoline to trampoline, gently gliding in the air. You and all of your classmates have a blast. You find an area for trampoline dodgeball and you begin to play. You split into two teams, each one gets a certain number of dodgeballs, and you begin to throw them back and forth at each other, jumping, dodging, and flipping out of the way to avoid them. It's one of the most fun times you've ever had playing dodgeball. But after a while, you and the other kids are starting to get tired. Well, I think it's time for the next stop, you say. Oh, the, the next stop, the teacher says. This isn't it, eh? Okay, everyone back on the bus. All of the kids gather and jump back on the bus. The supply teacher climbs aboard and begins counting. One, two, uh, yes, looks like they are here. Uh, let's go, bus driver, on to the next stop. You got it, the bus driver says, slamming down on the gas once again. You and all of the kids slam against the back of your seats as the bus twirls around in the parking lot and begins skidding out of there, driving quickly and erratically once again. Once again, at the end of the parking lot, you drive through a dark tunnel, and there's suddenly a huge flashing light. You have to close your eyes once again. But when you open them, you find yourself in the center of a jungle. But a jungle you've seen before. It's the dinosaur planet. All of the kids begin looking out the windows as Spaceship drives the bus through the huge opening. You can see dinosaurs on every side. Um, where are we now? 
the supply teacher asks. Oh, uh, this is, um, well, this is just a dinosaur world, like a, like a virtual reality dinosaur world, you explain. It's, uh, they just project these things on the walls of the tunnel, so it makes it look like you're really there, but it's just, it's basically just CGI and stuff like that. Don't worry about it, you answer. You continue to drive through the dinosaur planets, watching huge flying reptiles overhead, brontosauruses, triceratops, and you even witness a tyrannosaurus battling a stegosaurus in the distance. It's all uh, pretty neat, really. Just then, the tyrannosaurus that was battling the stegosaurus looks at the giant yellow bus sniffs in the air, and then begins to run towards you. Oh no, you say. Uh, spaceship, I mean, bus driver, I think it's time for our next stop, you say. Understood, the bus driver says. He suddenly hits the brakes and swings the bus around 180 degrees until it's facing the opposite direction. Once again, he hammers his foot down on the pedal as hard as he can, and the bus skids on the ground until it launches forward at amazing speed, especially considering that you're off-roading. The bus begins to bounce and jump off little hips and dips, and uh, the kids in the bus begin to pop up and down off of their seats, holding on for dear life. Soon, you see a huge circle in front of the bus. It lights up a bright blue color, and the bus drives straight through it. Again, there's a blinding flash of light on all sides, until the bus suddenly ends up inside some sort of parking garage or something like that, but a very futuristic looking parking garage. All right, the bus driver says, we're at our next destination, the moon base. Uh, what's the moon base? the supply teacher asks. Oh, the moon base is just a, a recreation or a, I guess sort of a, a hypothetical creation of what a uh, moon base might look like if in the future one day somebody could actually build one of those, you explain, not telling them that it's actually a real moon base that you and Spaceship created a long time ago. You lead all of the students off the bus through the huge open parking area and through a large set of metal doors. You lead them down halls and then into a huge cafeteria where you stop for lunch for a little bit. Each table has a little replicator and the kids can order whatever they want and it just appears in front of them as if magic. Once everyone's full, you lead them down the hall once again and into the hangar bay. Inside the hangar bay are a whole bunch of little individual spaceship fighters or something like that. Uh, this is the spaceship simulator, you tell them all. In here you can each drive your own spaceship, in virtual reality of course, and it'll look like you're really flying them. Cool, everyone says. Each one runs to one of the individual spaceships including the supply teacher who's looking very suspicious and a little bit scared of all this. He slowly climbs up the ladder into a spaceship of his own, and you do the same. Spaceship, you say. Um, have you been able to program these ships with a bunch of safeties so nobody can actually hurt themselves? You ask. Yes. I have programmed them all with an autopilot that will take over if they do anything dangerous. Cool, you say. Open the hatch. The huge hatch opens out into space, revealing a view of, well, a view of the earth down below. All of your friends gasp in amazement. Then you power up the ships and they all begin to float in the air. You lead them out of the shipyard and out into space. You and your friends spend some time flying the spaceships around. 
doing loops and spins, and even trying out a little obstacle course that Spaceship set up for everybody. You fly around the moon, and you even speed down towards the Earth and fly around it. Everyone's amazed at how realistic it looks, and only a few of them who have been on trips with you before know that it's real. You organize a little simulated space battle that you and your friends play for a little while, kind of like tag but with fake little laser guns. One person's it, and they have to chase down the other ships and zap them with the fake laser gun, and then that person's it. You play for quite a while, and it's a lot of fun. But then your watch begins to beep. Oh no, it's almost the end of school. Uh, everybody, we have to head back in right away and end the simulation, you say. You lead all the ships back to the moon base. A huge door opens on the side of the base, allowing you and all of the other students, and the supply teacher, to glide in and land safely on the ground, with the help of the autopilot, of course. You climb out of the spaceships, and you head back down the long metal hallways inside the moon base, until you get to the huge open garage area where the bus is parked. Once again, you and your friends all climb in the bus, and the bus driver slams down on the gas pedal, spinning the bus around until it's facing the other direction, and shooting straight for a large circular opening in the wall that's shining a blue color for some reason. There's another flash of light, and the spaceship ends up right back in the tunnel where you originally left from, speeding down the road, passing cars on both the left and the right side, before sliding around to the left, zooming in front of a whole bunch of other cars, and coming to an abrupt halt right in front of your school. The bus stops so suddenly that you kind of slam into the seat in front of you, before gently landing back in it. The door to the bus opens up and you and your friends run back into the school with just enough time to grab your backpacks and head back out for the end of the day. As soon as you get home, you're absolutely exhausted from the crazy day. You put your backpack wherever it's supposed to go and you uh, find your couch immediately. You lay down on the couch and your eyes just feel very, very tired. So you just let them close, just thinking you'll have a, a little bit of a rest for a while. No need to keep them open right now. You focus once again on your breath, noticing it going in and out. And with each out breath, your body relaxes more and more and you allow yourself to drift off to sleep. Good night, everyone.